item uh, class just to review some of what I've learned and also to teach other people uh, to do things. Now, uh, today I think I'm going to be covering... Um, I recently wrote an article about quantum... All right, hold on. V, Q, E. Let's, I can't remember what it stands for. It's like... Oh, variational. That's it. Variational quantum Eigen solvers. So... I'm going to pull up some kiss kit signed into quantum <coughs> excuse me signed into IBM quantum lab choose notebook give you some standard imports all that good jazz now if you've never heard of a variational quantum algin solver that's okay most people haven't unless you're like a math nerd and I am definitely not a math nerd like math is very hard for me to even understand so yeah um, I'm gonna cover some of what IBM says about these algorithms uh, this is what is called a near-term algorithm now um, I'm way like I understand algorithms better than I understand math I don't know why, it's just like my brain sees patterns better than it does math. And then, you know, you can you can look up, you can check math as like kind of a, a pattern in itself and try and understand it that way too, but, um, so let's see. Uh, so this is what Qiskit covers on these types of algorithms, variational quantum eigen solvers, which uh, differ from their classical uh, companions, uh, just because it uses a or it uses a quantum computer in the middle of the process, or it um, is basically using quantum uh, a quantum simulator or a quantum computer in the middle of the process to um, solve the problem faster and with less computational power. So that's the the main goal with these bad boys right here. <clears throat> Let's go to the introduction and check it out. Uh, in many applications, it is important to find minimal eigenvalue of a matrix. For example, in chemistry, the minimum eigenvalue of Hermitian matrix characterizing the molecule is the ground state energy of that system. In the future, the quantum phase estimation algorithm may be used to find minimum eigenvalues. However, its implementation of useful problems requires circuits depths exceeding the limits of the available hardware in the NISC era. Thus, in 2014, Purizo et al. proposed VQE to estimate the ground state energy of a molecule using Schauler circuits. Formally stated, given a Hermitian matrix H with an unknown minimum eigenvalue, lambda minimum something, I think that's what that is. I can't remember what this is. But uh, uh, associated with the eigenstate, and if you know, you can definitely drop a comment. Uh, this is definitely bracket notation, these two, so I know that it involves quantum stuff, but I don't remember what this symbol stands for. Uh, VQE provides an estimate lambda bound ding to the lambda, lambda minimum and that gives you a bunch of uh, math symbols which I am still depicting so I think this is an H gate and then this is uh, well, let's, t let's look it up while we're here right? Curious mind and all. Ha 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 ha. What these do? Psi. It is called Psi. And it does. It's a wave function. Oh. Okay. Well, see, I know about wave functions and wave function collapses, but I don't know all the symbols so it's hilarious it's nice to fill in some of the gaps though 
and they give you a mathematical background. Uh, for those of you who need proof and all that, go ahead, read it, love it, enjoy it, prove it away. You know, if you find something wrong, go complain to IBM about it, not me. I honestly don't care if this math is wrong, I just care about the results. Results is what I care about, and algorithms have been shown to give results. Like this one, Variational Quantum Algen Solver. Uh, so basically, this all this is saying is that you can represent um, some of, some problems as state problems, and because you can use you can basically use like another ver variation of that problem and represent it as a bunch of states or energy levels, and because it's you know those energy levels, you can just use a quantum computer um, because that's exactly what a quantum computer does. Um, and by switching those energy state levels, you can get the best answer. Uh, let's see what this is. Uh, systematic approach to varying ants is required to implement the variational method on quantum computer. VQE does this so through the use of parameterization circuit with, with a fixed form. Such a circuit is often called a variational form and its action may be represented by the linear transformation u to, I think that's theta, let's take a look. I know, right, I'm learning with you. That's, that's the way this goes. Uh, yep, theta, okay. A variational form is applied to the starting state wave, uh, so bracket in wave function. Uh, such as the vacuum state zero, or the Hark tree flock fox state generates an output state u theta, <coughs> and then bracket uh, wave function equals wave function theta. Iterative optimization over wave function theta aims to yield an expectation value. Uh, a bunch more math. Wave function theta, uh, H, I don't know what they mean by that, but I, I mean, I think it's an H gate. Um, it might be something else. Ideally, wave function theta will be close to the wave function minimum, where closeness is characterized by either fidelity or Manhattan distance. Although, in practice, useful bonds on the EGS can be obtained even in this if, if this is not the case. Okay, moreover, a fixed variational form of polynomial numbers of parameters can only generate transformations to a polynomial size subspace of all states in exponentially sized Hilbert space. Consequently, varial, various for, variational forms exist, such as RY and RYRZ are heuristic design without consideration of the target domain. Otherwise, such as UCCSD utilize domain specific knowledge to generate close approximations based on the problem structure. The structure of a common variational forms is discussed in greater depth in this document. So this is a simple version of it. When constructing a variational form, we must balance two opposing goals. Ideally, our n qubit variational form would be able to generate any possible state uh, bracket uh, wave function where uh, bracket wave function e c n to the n and n equals 2 n to the n however we would like the variational form to use as few parameters as possible here we aim to give intuition for the construction of variational forms satisfying our first goal while we're disregarding the second goal for the sake of simplicity Okay, consider the case where n equals 1. The u gate. The u3 gate takes three parameters theta. Uh, I don't know what this one is. Let's take a look. What are you? Pi. Phi. Phi and psi. 
Why so many Greek terms, you jerks? Greek. Okay, uppercase, lowercase, ancient Greek. Oh, blah blah blah. But what is it? What does it do? Tell me. Tell me secrets of the universe. I need to know. In ordinary text, the character is used exclusively, all those. Graphic representation, less. It makes an effort to distinguish between the two letter, small letter phi and small phi symbol. Use in mathematical context, yes. But what? Why? What is inside? Used as a symbol in probability theory, dense function. In an angle, okay, golden ratio. The letter phi is usually common in physics, wave functions, and uh, quantum mechanics, such as Schrodinger's equation and bracket notation. <sighs> okay, well, it still doesn't tell me what it does, so I guess you're gonna you're gonna have to look deeper into what that does, because I have no clue. But I don't need to know in order to use algorithms, and that's my point. Is I am more of a computer science engineer than a mathematician so i will just figure it out later i don't know i'll i'll figure it out while implementing it that's that's kind of what i do bunch of more math symbols <coughs> i don't really know what cosine and sine do um, I haven't really studied that in a long time, but I think you can represent all of this in multi-matrix, multi-linear uh, multiplication, so, or just like vector multiplication, so it's a lot easier that way. Um, I just like to simplify things, because I am not huge on math, so. Uh, plus, if you can abstract something... I generally do abstract it. Okay, so then uh, they're using the global phase, right? Any possible single qubit transformation may be implemented by appropriate settings of these parameters. Consequently, for the single qubit case, a variational form capable of generating any possible state is given by the circuit. And then wave function uh, U3, um, theta, phi, Lambda, U, Theta, Phi, Lambda, and then wave function. Moreover, the, this universal variational form has three parameters and thus can be efficiently optimized. It is worth emphasizing that the ability to generate an arbitrary state ensures that during the optimization process, the variational form does not limit the set of attainable states. Over... <clears throat> which expectation of value of h can be taken. Ideally, this ensures that the minimum expectation value is limited only by the capabilities of the classical optimizer. A less trivial universal variation form may be derived for a two-qubit case, where two bodies interact, two or two-body interactions, and thus entanglement must considered to be achieved universally based on the work presented by Shendel et al., the following is an example of a universal primarized 2-bit circuit. Okay, so apparently they are representing a 2-bit circuit with a bunch of math. That's what this is, right? Now, uh, I can tell you this is a C-naught gate, and this is a C-naught gate, and they're entangling them, right? I can tell you that this is the wave function of 0 and the wave function of 1, of qubit one, 0 and of qubit 1. Um, now, what they're doing with u3, theta, 0, and phi, and lambda, I do not really know. Um, I honestly know this form much. Like, I understand this form better. Let's go to Composer. All right. So, give it zero. H, let's put an H gate there, and then a C not gate here. 
I don't know how to flip C not gates. You flip it. Oh, here, let's just do this. That should give us a flipped C not gate. Yep. Bada bing, bada boom. So it looks something like this, and then RY probably in the middle of these, something like that. And, um,. Probably like that. It doesn't probably have an H gate anywhere. Let's remove it. All right, I will remove it here. Is that better for you? Does that satisfy your needs? No. Oh, you jerk! Why aren't you removing the thing? Up and run. Oh. oh yeah, you can run it on an actual quantum computer. This is a real quantum computer with five qubits stuff, right? Uh, why can't you just delete? Delete. Why, why did that take so much? It wouldn't delete it from the button. It wouldn't delete it from the code. I mean, really. Okay. So let's assume it's something like this. Um, it's probably... This might be wrong. I'm not sure what... How to represent this operator in in a quantum computer so i'm just putting ry because i've seen let's go back to this one so i've seen um some code and i'll bring up my here let me bring it up over here medium because I actually wrote an article about this, so if you want to try out like a little miniature problem of this um, yourself, I have a bunch of code I've finished. I'm just logging in. Here, I'm going to play some music while the free Google music for... Uh, for YouTube channels. Yeah, let's do that. Ah, oh, that's sending it to the wrong. Here, hold on. There we go. That's probably sounds better. Back to the future. Alright, almost finished logging in.
I'm just gonna look around. See if Kit has a bunch of them. I have Marco, but that one was. I think it's locked to Cubit by Cubit. I'm not sure what it covers, so. classical and that's something that we can use right now. Quantum key distribution is pretty cool. Uh, phase uh, estimation, Shore and Grovers, that's pretty classic when you're like trying to learn um, quantum computing stuff. So definitely check some of these out, play around with it. That, that's the best way to learn any of this is just to go to IBM Quantum, sign up for an account, you know, and then like start playing with this stuff because that's really the best way to learn uh, for me and, f and I definitely recommend doing so okay where is the theme I want to change the theme I'm tired of this white interface I don't like white yes bring the darkness that's it so much easier on the eyes isn't it the darkness anyway uh, you can uh, look up, you know, the, it's a lot of stuff that uh, IBM has, and it's very um, easy to get started. You don't have to do a lot of setup work just because they have a bunch of the algorithms and a bunch of the code already for you. So definitely check it out. Um, also, this is, so I was talking mainly about this algorithm right here. So let me see if there's a functional login quantum solvers. We talked about the mathematical background. Okay. Simple ones. Run on. Yeah, let's do this. Because I am a man of action. I do not like theory that much. Theory is amazing and cool, but honestly. Trying stuff out is so much better. So, you're going to need to import all these libraries. Make sure you always add the import libraries, even if it's repeated, whatever. Just as long as they're there once, it should load what it needs. I'm sure it'll give you a warrant, an error if you need if you need to replace anything. But uh, so that's all I did is just add all the imports. Right now we can run the VQE on a state vector simulator. Um, so let's take a look at this code and see what it does. I'll try and explain it from my understanding as to what it gives out. So we're defining a get qubit op from the disk. Putting in a variable there, driver. Freeze list, remove list, repulse and energy of a molecule, something about particles, orbitals, remove list, freeze. So it's performing a bunch of operations on these things. <coughs> okay. So we demonstrate the calculation of a ground state energy for Lehigh L I H at various inter atomic distances. A driver for the molecule must be created at each such distance. Note that in this experiment to reduce the number of molecules used we freeze the core and remove two unoccupied orbitals. First we define a function that takes an interatomic distance and returns the appropriate qubit operator H as well as other information about the operator. Okay so we just input that. 
The first exact ground state is calculated using the qubit operator and the classical exact eigensolver. Subsequently, the initial uh, wave function state is created, which the VQE instance uses to produce the final N sets minimum theta. Okay. The exact results and the VQE result at each interatomic distance is stored. Observe that the result given by VQE dot run back and energy plus shift is equivalent to the quantity minimum. I think this is the classical minimum. Where the minimum is not necessarily the global minimum. So sometimes, I think that's what it's saying. I wish I had a graph. So basically, sometimes you get like the minimum distance, right? And then like the minimum distance like would be here. Just follow the mouse. Just pretend there's like nothing. And just say that this is a wave, right? So in this wave, there the minimum distance would be here, but it's not the global distance. So like the global distance might be like this which is even lower than this minimum distance. So sometimes you get caught up in that, that's what it, that's saying. Uh, which is kind of hard. I mean, there you can use a bunch of other mathematical models to, to get yourself out of that. So uh, just keep that in mind with VQE. Sometimes you'll get a local minimum, not a global minimum. And what you're really aiming for is global minimum because um, that'll give you the best uh, uh, solving results solution solution that's what the word I'm looking for all right so while initializing the VQE instance with VQE qubit op var form optimizer matrix the expectation value of H on the wave function theta is directly calculated through the matrix multiplication see this stuff is a lot easier than any of the other stuff like calculus which I'm surprised that all you need is matrix multiplication for quantum uh, computing. It makes it so much easier. However, when using a, an actual quantum device or a true simulator, such as a chasm simulator, a VQE qubit far form optimizer, Pilatus calculation of the expectation value is more complicated. Why? Because computers or quantum computers are not, um, they're not noise free right now uh, so they can give you errors and stuff like that but a Hamiltonian may be represented as a sum of a poly strings and with each poly term acting on the qubit as specified by the mapping being used <coughs> each poly string has a corresponding circuit appended to the circuit corresponding to the wave function theta uh, inside the bracket notation. Subsequently, each of these circuits is executed and all of these results are used to determine the expectation of H on the wave function theta. In the following example, we initialize the VQE instance with the matrix mode, so the expectation value is directly calculated through the matrix multiplication. Note the following code snippet may take a few run minutes to run com to completion. So let's copy it. Uh, I definitely recommend writing it out. Uh, that way you'll get way more practice uh, with code. Uh, just because I always need practice. I know, uh, I mean, I can take code apart and, uh, and you know, try and find like what it does and what, why it does that. But um, I, I've, I'm just lazy, so I'm just going to copy it. Okay, so we're getting some results here. Interatomic distance, 0.6. VQE results. And the exact energy. So this is a way more complicated um, version of this problem. So like in, in the... In the blog post I made, I, ma I, I basically give the same problem as a backpack problem which is a lot easier to solve uh, you know you have like few constraints um, it's just easier to understand it's still running so I'm gonna leave that running for a sec but yeah uh, once it's finished 
this does about 3.9, so it's still ha not halfway. And we're just waiting for, uh, for this to finish. Which simulator is it using? Take a look. Intro atomic of particles. Optimizer, basic backend. So this is using the state vector simulator. So it's not quite a quantum simulator. It's like close, but not all the way there. And then the chasm simulator, that one's closest to an actual quantum computer. Uh, so that's almost finished. Change up the music a bit, see what uh, what we got up in here. Maybe we can review some other stuff while it's loading. Math symbols. And then it's gonna create a graph for us, which is cool. Alright, all energies have been calculated, so I guess we're gonna see it uh, in a graph. And this is it. Um, so, what mostly it, what we're, we're mostly trying to find is like the basic, the lowest setting of this right here, this energy state. So let's move on. Now we can run it on a noisy simulator, which is way closer to the actual quantum simulators. Um, take all that and run it. Think about timestamps. Must configure the optimizer. Results. Okay. Well, I guess that's all they give. But here, let's. Uh, when noise mitigation is enabled, even though the results does not fall on the chemical ac ac within chemical accuracy defined. Uh, okay. And so this is like a VQE. I think it's to simulate uh, molecule molecular interactions. No, it's yeah. So it's simulating mo molecules using VQEs, which is really cool. Um, just because. That's one form that we can, like we can use that already with the noisy quantum computers we have. And then if you want to check out my article, definitely do so. Near term algorithms hybrids. It's on medium.com. Um, this is a simpler version of this problem uh, where I just you know define a backpack dilemma. Um, import like the knapsack problem from this optimization and such things um, and then this you could actually recode to like make it solve almost any other problem so like if you have a shipping container that you want to fill and you have specific weights and things like that you can pretty much parameter parameterize all this to make the problem reusable and recodable um, and then just change a bunch of stuff but this is the like the classical um, solving of it right and then I go into the quantum solving of it which I got the same answer for each one sometimes you don't always get the same answer but um, and then this is how it kind of looks like when it's drawn uh, in a circuit. Uh, definitely read the article, check it out. 
uh, do it yourself see if you get any different results or or if you want to represent the problem in a different way um, but that's what I'm going to cover for today on variational quantum eigensolvers I'm going to try and cover uh, more of these algorithms and protocols um, at least once a week on Wednesdays about 12 p.m. Mountain Time uh, it was like 10 minutes late today so I apologize for anyone who's waiting on me I didn't see anyone waiting on me but you know still uh, tons of love y'all and uh, keep on boogieing your quantum adventures uh, ne never stop you know never stop learning it's, it's the way to be I'll see y'all next week and if you're watching my video game streams and you tuned in on this uh, I, I feel like that would be pretty hilarious and uh, I hope you enjoyed it anyway you know learning about quantum computing I'll probably stream more video game stuff later but I'm gonna try and stream quantum computing stuff once a week see y'all have a beautiful time whatever you